Problems and defects are costly. None of the businesses are willing to shell out excessive money from their pocket. But there are numerous high-profile examples of product recalls due to poorly designed products or processes. Customers have high expectations of these product manufacturers and service providers to deliver high-quality and reliable products. Public criticism of these products is quite natural as customers blame their service providers, manufacturers, or suppliers for selling below-par products that aren't safe. It's a wide problem affecting nearly every industry. Often, we find faulty products that have various problems in how they have been designed. Issues like these creep in because of the extensive testing phase later in the product development cycle. Identifying any issue at this stage adds up significant expenses and causes a delay in the schedule. The challenge is to reduce the expenses and complete the project in time while building a quality product or process that will delight customers. So that means the challenges in designing products keeping in mind the quality and reliability factors, thereby never allowing defects to come in the first place. One way that can be achieved is using failure mode and effects analysis or FMEA. FMEA was one of the earliest developed methodologies in 1950 to increase reliability. Even today, it's regarded as a highly effective tool to lower the possibility of failure. So in this video, we will see what this method is and how it can help you mitigate excess costs and delays. Before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's topic. We will start our session with a brief understanding of what FMEA is. Then we will discuss the types of FMEA and the benefits of FMEA. Moving on, we will understand when to perform FMEA and how to perform FMEA. I hope the agenda was clear. Also, if you like this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to learn more about quality management and its practices, check out Invensys Learning's Quality Management Certification Training. All of the necessary information is given in the description box. Without any further ado, let's get started with our first topic. What is FMEA? FMEA or failure mode and effects analysis is a structured approach to uncover potential failures that may exist or go unseen within the design of a product, service, or process. This methodology aims to enable organizations to anticipate the various points of failure during the design stage itself to eliminate all possible future repercussions like delayed completion, excess capital expenditure, and so on. In simple terms, FMEA uses a spreadsheet to help professionals identify and note down all that could go wrong within a product or process using qualitative and systematic methods. It also helps us know the possible causes of failures and detects failure before its occurrence. These characteristics help industries take quick and decisive actions that help mitigate failure while creating a reliable and quality product or process. Failure modes, here are the different ways in which a process or product can fail. On the other hand, Effects are failures that can lead to defects, waste, or unsafe outcomes for the end customer. Thus failure mode and effects analysis or FMEA is designed to identify failure modes, segregate, prioritize, and then limit these failure modes from ever occurring. This was about what FMEA is. Now, let us move on to our next topic and discuss about the types of FMEA. There are several FMEA types, and they are discussed below to give you an insight. All these types focus on detecting failure modes early on and eliminating them. First of the types is design FMEA. This type of FMEA enables you to identify and address failure modes during the design stage or at the end. It involves breaking down the design into several components and analyzing the potential failure modes. Second is process FMEA. This type of FMEA is used in analyzing and maintaining process control objectives. As the name suggests, it's performed on processes rather than on products. Like DFMEA, you will break down the process into various components here. Third is FMEKA. It's known as failure mode, effects, and criticality analysis. It brings criticality analysis into the FMEA process. Now, the other well-known types of FMEA are functional FMEA, software FMEA, manufacturing FMEA, service FMEA, etc. So, this was about the types of FMEA. Now, moving on to our next topic, benefits of FMEA. The FMEA consists of many tools to help companies detect failure as early as possible in the process or product design stage. FMEA provides companies with benefits such as multiple options for eliminating the risk. Next, the verification and validation of changes increase with FMEA. Also, product and process collaborate to create a hassle-free experience. Fourth, 
It helps in enhancing manufacturing and assembly and finally it helps lower the entire project costs. These were just some of the benefits of FMEA. Now, let us move on to our next topic and discuss, when to perform FMEA. There are times or phases where performing FMEA makes sense, some of them are. When you design a new process or a product or a service. Next, when you think of improving an existing process or performing in a different way. Next, when you put up a quality improvement goal for a process or product and, when you need to understand the underlying failure of the process. On top of that, it's advisable to perform an FMEA throughout the lifetime of a process or the product. Quality and reliability factors should be consistently analyzed and improved to achieve optimal results. Now we understand what FMEA is, its various types, and when to perform FMEA. Let's now understand how to perform FMEA in this part. The first step is identifying FMEA failure modes. The first step in performing FMEA is determining the right participants to determine the failure modes. Because only the right people with the right experience must be involved to catch potential failure modes, these could be designers or process owners. FMEA practitioners could also invite end customers and suppliers to gather alternative viewpoints, provided feasibly. Once you gather all the participants, the brainstorming session can begin. All the selected participants must identify all systems, processes, components, and functions that could fail or go wrong. Their direct goal is to improve the level of quality or reliability. The designated team must not confine themselves to identifying potential failure modes but also determine its cause. The second step is to set the criteria for FMEA analysis. A general FMEA methodology uses three basic criteria to assess an issue, which are First, the severity of the effect on the end customer. This criterion incorporates all standards that are important to the specific industry. These could be safety standards, production continuity, loss of business, damaged reputation, environment, etc. Second is frequency of the problem. This criterion ranks the probability of each failure mode during the expected products or process's lifetime. Third, the detection level of the problem, that is how easy it's to detect. Many issues pop up, which can be ranked accordingly based on how easy it is to detect problems and take constructive action to prevent failure. Participants gathered around for completing FMEA on a process or product must set and agree on a ranking scale from 1 and 10. 1 means very low, and 10 means very high on the above criteria severity, frequency, and detection. It must be done for each of the failure modes identified. FMEA, although being a qualitative process, is important in using data to stack and qualify the decisions the team makes regarding the ratings they offer. Once ratings have been given for each of those failure modes, we can find out the risk priority number or RPN. The RPN formula is. RPN is equal to severity multiplied by frequency multiplied by detection. Let's understand that from a simple real-life example. Suppose you are analyzing the tire of a car and presented with a flat tire scenario. Then the severity of a flat tire is very high as it will cause frustration to the customer in being unable to drive. So the severity will be 10. On the other hand, the frequency is quite low in a normal driving scenario. So we will rate the frequency as 3. Finally, how easy it is to detect it. It's quite easy to detect a flat tire, so we will rate the detection as 2. Therefore using the formula, the RPN of this particular failure mode will be RPN is equal to 10 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 60. I hope it was clear. Now, the third step is setting FMEA priorities. Once the participants have characterized each failure mode and rated it, they can move on to setting FMEA priorities. This list must be made in descending RPN order. It helps the participants focus where they must focus first and then leave the less priority-based ones to the last. There isn't any well-defined RPN threshold beyond which you must give more attention to failure modes. The best way is to use the Pareto rule. It helps identify 20% of the problems that cause 80% of all the failure modes. Next, the fourth step is FMEA corrective actions. The final stage is when the priorities are agreed upon by the participants and then moving on to taking up corrective actions to reduce or eliminate failure modes or help in detecting them easily. The leader among the participants will assign these actions and set target completion dates. Once the corrective actions have been completed, the team must meet again to determine and reassess the failure modes and rescore on the different criteria. It improves the effectiveness of the corrective actions taken. 
I would like to conclude the session by saying, FMEA cannot substitute good engineering. Rather, it optimizes good engineering by applying app knowledge and experience in reviewing the design progress of a product or process by assessing its risk of failure. It's a valuable tool for businesses to improve their customer experience and leverage it to improve their market acquisitions and retention. So, with this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. Comment your thoughts in the comment section below. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell, never to miss an update from the Invensys Learning Channel. Also, to learn more about quality management and its practices, check out Invensys Learning's Quality Management Certification Training. Invensys Learning is one of the world's leading and best professional certification training providers. If you're looking to touch new career heights, Invensys Learning will help you achieve your dream. All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. Thank you. Have a nice day.